We have a rendering, what scientists say is underneath that volcano, an ocean of molten rock, they tell us, that stretches for hundreds of miles. Of course, nobody needs to freak out right now at all. Scientists say there's a, only about a 10% chance of an eruption like this happening any time this century. So there's a, there's a good chance you'll never see it. But 10%, I mean, that's not tiny. And the U.S. Geological Survey noted last year, even if Yellowstone does erupt, it could be a small incident, not some Armageddon type thing. Michio Kaku joins us now. He's a theoretical physicist, a professor, a best-selling author, and friend, friend, of the pro, friend of the program. Give us some context on this, what we're talking about here. Well, forget the image of Yogi Bear representing Yellowstone. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. Now, that's Category 8. This report looked at Category 7, which is much more likely once every thousand years rather than once every million years. That means in every century, there's a 10% chance that somewhere on the planet Earth, there could be a supervolcanic Category 7 eruption. That's the danger. You, you just talked about a volcano that could, could wipe out 20 states. How, how in the world is that possible? Well, it's happened before, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3, and also 0.6 million years ago. We have the evidence of a gigantic eruption that is sufficient to tear the guts out of the U.S. of A. So this report has to be taken seriously, but hey, don't sell the store, don't panic. We don't expect it to happen in our lifetime. It, it, it's hard really to imagine this, this lake of lava that stretches hundreds of miles in all directions. It, uh, how do we know that and how, how, do, how do they read that? Well, just two years ago, there was a scare in fact. We actually began to measure the size of this lava hotspot and it turned out to be twice as big as we previously thought. However, uh, the good news is that it's not migrating, it's not moving. We see no indication whatsoever that a big one is coming. However, eventually the law of averages catches up to you. And this report singled out uh, Mount Vesuvius outside Naples, Italy, outside Mexico City and Yellowstone as three hotspots where a Category 7 volcanic eruption could indeed take place in this century. So there are only three of this size in all the world? Well, there's several in um, Indonesia and uh, New Zealand that have had Category 8 eruptions, in fact. But then again, we're talking about once every million years for Category 8. Category 7 will be many times the size of Mount St. Helen, enough to cause widespread destruction across a state, but not enough to destroy the U.S. of A. But still, something that we have to take very seriously now. What would we get in the way of warnings, Michio? Well, unlike a media from out of space, where you get no warning whatsoever, we get warnings. If you've seen movies like Pompeii, you know that there are days, in fact weeks, of eruptions building up, grumbling inside, underneath the ground, near the, the pocket of lava. So there would be enough time, several weeks, in order to begin evacuation if and when such an unlikely event were to take place. All right, Michio Kaku on the news deck. No time to panic, but interesting, very interesting. Thank you. Well, throughout history, massive volcanic eruptions have had damaging effects to our planet and its people. Well, scientists at NASA are now trying to prevent future events, which they say may just be the only way to save the human race. RT's Trini Chavez explains. Supervolcanic eruptions have had some devastating effects on our planet and all those on it. Therefore, experts at NASA are working on some risky strategies to prevent one from happening, since we may be on the brink of one erupting very soon. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming is famous for its tranquil geysers and hot springs. But beneath its beautiful surface of the park lies a massive volcanic chamber that could be on the verge of exploding. 
According to the United States Geological Survey, three extremely large explosive eruptions have occurred at Yellowstone in the past 2.1 million years, with a reoccurrence interval of about 600,000 to 800,000 years. The most recent took place 640,000 years ago, suggesting that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption. But outlets like geysers and hot springs at the park can bleed out some heat, delaying the inevitable eruption. And when NASA experts analyzed the problem, they thought the most logical solution would be to cool the volcano down. NASA has a plan to drill a hole into the side of the volcano and pump water through it. When the water comes back out, it'll be heated to over 600 degrees, slowly cooling the volcano. The team hopes that given enough time, this process will take enough heat from the volcano to prevent it from ever erupting. According to the BBC, Brian Wilcox, a former member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, talked about the actual devastation that could come from an eruption and the risky techniques that the agency is considering for preventing one, including ways that could potentially set one off. The possible plan would drill into the bottom of the Yellowstone volcano using high-pressure water to release heat from the magma chamber. But Wilcox said this could be very risky. He told the BBC this can make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, and you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. Although NASA is considering other plans, it seems that cooling down the volcano could work even though it's a risky process. And it's not cheap either. The plan would be around an estimated $4.5 billion. Reporting in New York, Trinity Chavez, RT. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, enormous fissures are opening up around the world. Another one has been spotted south of Yellowstone at the Grand Teton National Park. Two very popular tourist destinations, Hidden Falls and Inspiration Point. I think it's Inspiration Point. Let's zoom in here. Yep, Inspiration Point have been closed due to a 100-foot-long fissure discovered by park rangers. Now, this fissure has literally caused enough concern to shut down two of the most popular spots at the Grand Teton National Park. June of this year was the second most popular year on record for Yellowstone National Park, which is just north of Grand Teton. And oftentimes, if you're going to Yellowstone, you're driving through the Grand Tetons to get there, unless you're coming north. So the most popular way is usually through Jackson, Jackson Hole, the Grand Tetons. It's a beautiful drive. And when I took that route, Coming from San Antonio, went through Utah, went through Idaho, then Wyoming, the southern part, did the majority of the loop, and gorgeous. Beautiful weather, blue skies, the animals were acting completely normal. One thing that I did find interesting and really made me want to go out there even more, though, was the steamboat geyser that's erupted 11 times over the past four months. Before that, it erupted 10 times over a course of 28 years. Now, somebody left a comment that back in the 60s, there was a, a substantial amount of activity at the steamboat geyser, so I need to do more research into that, and then I will follow up with a podcast. Now, as you can see right here, this is very interesting, Mr. MBB333 did a podcast on this, and then Mary Greeley and Suspicious Observers. Well, that's a, a different podcast, but it's nice to see some alternative news really pick up the ball on these geographical anomalies that could be the canary in the coal mine, that could be the sign to say, hey, be prepared, get ready. I literally just ordered two more, uh, two more supplies or two more 70 mil packs from my Patriot Supply. They're doing $67 specials right now for 70 mils. That's like two weeks worth of food for 67 bucks. Plus it's got a 25 year shelf life. And hopefully things are going to be fine, folks. I think it's always good to prepare because you know how Murphy's Law ties in with Murphy being an optimist. So it's always better to be prepared. Check them out. If you are interested, just click the link, my Patriot Supply. Okay. Now check this out. Yellowstone sees second busiest June on record. Literally Yellowstone, the largest, <laughs> the largest volcano in the world, actually the second largest, there's one in India that's supposed to be bigger. The second largest volcano in the world is one of the most popular tourist destinations. Hawaii is still dealing with horrific effects from Kilauea, from that volcano. The uh, Indonesia volcano is having some substantial activity. There's two volcanoes in Alaska with substantial activity, Cleveland and I can't remember the name of the other one. Fuego of Guatemala, activity out there. Japan, crazy flooding going on in Japan. I couldn't have gotten to Southern Colorado at a better time. I am so glad to be out of a big city. Can you imagine being in a big city 
and trying to go to the grocery store if a serious catastrophe such as Yellowstone erupting, or like, look at Houston. I mean, I wasn't far from that. I was having to deal with the gas shortages in Texas. And even though that wasn't that bad, it was really bad for a lot of people at the time. People were freaking out. And I wasn't freaking out, but I was definitely seeing some signs of alarm because I'm looking at the long-term effects. If just a few days of no gas is going to cause people to do what they did in Texas, imagine what would happen if you couldn't get food for a few weeks or if people couldn't get food for a few weeks because they weren't prepared. What are they going to do? I mean, watch these videos where people go into these Black Friday specials and they punch people in the face that are twice their age that are walking around on walkers to get a TV that's on sale. It's insane. The animalistic instincts come out in people. It's wicked, especially when you have groups together. Did you know that the IQ, the group IQ oftentimes will lower by at least 10 points, the studies that they've done? It's insane, but watch a ball game and you'll get the point. It's like this, we've talked about frequencies and such. It's like this frequency, this vibrational frequency that ends up taking over everybody else in the crowd because it becomes this like group archetype and the alpha frequency ends up taking over. And unfortunately, oftentimes the alpha frequency isn't the most intelligent. It's you've got 50 people out of a crowd of, or let's just say 80 people out of a crowd of 85 and those 80 people have lower vibrational frequencies and so they're all jiving so the higher vibrational frequencies people that are more intelligent oftentimes those people won't even be there but if for some reason they are their iq will lower and they'll get stuck in that trap not always if you're a leak project listener you probably won't even be in that situation and if you are you'll probably find a way to get out before things get nasty because that's just how you roll i'm just saying so good for you second busiest season on record steamboat Geyser. Oh, yeah. Let's go take a look at Steamboat Geyser here. It just erupted a few days ago, too. And they didn't have much media coverage on this. I didn't see any media coverage on it. I had to find it on the, on the Yellowstone's website. They're like, oh, yeah, by the way, it just erupted the other day again. So let's see here. Scroll down. Starting from 1990, 91, 2000, 2002. You can see here timelines. And then March 15th to July 6th. Look at that, 11 times. Now, previous, let's, let's do this. Let's type this in. How many times did Steamboat Geyser erupt in the 60s? Hmm. Okay, Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone National Park is the world's tallest geyser. Okay. Shooting more than 300 feet into the air sometimes. That's one powerful stream, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Hello. Five times. Okay, so, yes, yes. No, it's not what I wanted to know. 1960s, here we go. It's not here. Where is it? I'll find out. I'll get back to you on that. Durr. Hmm. Let's see here. Check this out. called there let's take a look here okay so elevation 9200 feet boom <laughs> so there's the state of wyoming and there's the lava underneath it there's the magma oh you just look at it now hopefully because it's heating up there's no question there is absolutely no question it's heating up there's no question the activity is getting hotter out there when i say it's heating up i'm just referring to the activity so here's the earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park region from 73 to 2014. You can see that there's, looks like about a 10-year difference there. There's some pretty substantial spikes. And this goes to 2014. Why not show us 2017? Because in 2017, it was hot. This is cool. I like this. Because this is a track. You're tracking this over 16 million years. And you're looking at the hot spot of the volcano. And you can see how it started. And it looks like it was over here in Utah. Moved over into Idaho through Idaho, now it's up into Wyoming, close to Montana. And if you want to take a look at the ash maps, if you want to get some good ash, you should check out the ash map, the Yellowstone projections, and they're basing that data off of pre previous wind models. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy the amount of ash fall. So I'm thinking, let's just say there's a, a little blurb 
out there. Not even anything serious if you look at it in, in reference to how serious it could be. Well, I mean, how much of the infrastructure would be halted? Would martial law, I mean, these are just questions I'm asking myself, and, and I'm sure you've probably asked yourself this question too. Would martial law be put into play? Would this be a way for a new system to be brought into the limelight Like maybe, okay, food resources, water, food, you know, energy, medicine, vitamins, products to keep you warm and safe. Well, now those are going to be at a much higher demand and a lot more difficult to produce because if you've got a, a volcano of this magnitude erupting, you're going to have problems all over the world. I mean, you're going to have um, you know, product transportation issues, it's going to get nasty. So then it would be easier for a government to implement a martial law system, curfews, okay, you're only allowed this much water, you're only allowed this much food, you can only travel at this time, you need to have your papers, you need to have proof of ID, I mean, this could be something that would be beyond anything we have seen before, depending on how long you've been alive. Anything I've seen before. I mean, if you had to go through Vietnam or, or World War II, or if you've lived on, you know, in places around the world that have seen horrific things that have been talked about, then I'm not talking about you necessarily. For me, if Yellowstone... And it's just weird, the synchronicities, too, because the, the, two, the film 2012, the um, getting out there when I did, and as busy as it was at the time that it was, Charlie Frost, I've been referenced as Charlie Frost so many times, I don't know whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. I think the guy's great, personally, but I don't know what that person's thinking. It's just, and then, the, you know, I go out there, and stay with me here, I'm sure you are, just weird synchronicities that you probably have as well that make you think more about things. So the night before I get to Yellowstone, at the hotel, I'm not even in Wyoming, I'm still in Utah, the, t the TV series Yellowstone comes on, I mean, I wasn't even looking for it, it's just, I'm flipping through the channels, it pops up, Kevin Costner's on Yellowstone, I'm like, oh wow, that's an interesting synchronicity. And I haven't seen the series, I just watched part of that episode, and it was kind of, you know, had the, the drama and the, anyway. So, not necessarily my cup of tea, but I might start watching it just to see how it starts from the beginning. I mean, it's, if you like that sort of thing, I'm sure you'd really enjoy it, I'm not, I'm not um, Anyway, so not cri uh, criticizing the series in any way. It's just not really my forte. But it's just interesting that the night before I go to Yellowstone, that TV show pops up. You know, It's not like I was in Yellowstone and it came on because that would be a little bit different out of the area. And just the weird connections, the timelines, the amount of people that were there. But I felt good about it when I got there because, first of all, yes, there, there were enormous amounts of dead trees. And a lot of the dead trees were from the fires from 88, but there were certain areas that the trees that were dead were not from the fires. They were from beetle kill or from you know, other anomalies, maybe certain dis-ease or things that, that harm those, those trees. And you know, many of us have speculated, could it be the stratospheric aerosol injections and the aluminum and the barium and the pollutants that are causing the immune systems of certain trees, especially at specific elevations and specific um, s s uh,